Hi there, my name is Santiago and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I decided to go ahead and show you guys a complete look at my AMCAS application for medical school. I recently shared that I got accepted to five medical schools here on YouTube, but I also shared that here on TikTok and I received a lot of questions there about what my application looked like, how I could possibly maybe share a little bit more information, what I did for volunteering, leadership, and just a ton of questions regarding my application. So that brings us here today to this video where I'm gonna go ahead and show you a complete look at my application, hopefully answer those questions and yeah let's get into it all right so immediately when we look at the application we see here that it has some basic information about who you are it'll ask for your legal name it'll ask for your date of birth where you were born uh, your citizenship status and that's pretty important for people like me who were born outside of the country and who just recently became a citizen. From there it'll ask you questions about where you live which by the way if you see anything marked in black that means it's private information that I don't really feel like putting out into the universe right now but if you have any questions I think later on there's some stuff that you might go ahead and reach out to me and I have no problem sharing that information with you. All right back to this. It'll continue to ask you about some biographic information where you currently reside, where you were born, and how you identify. From there, there's still more questions about your childhood residence, the languages that you spoke. For me, that was English that you can see there, and Spanish that you can see up here. It'll also ask you how you paid for college. So for me, you can see here that it was mostly scholarship that uh, those that were merit-based and those that were financial need-based and a little bit of student loans, no family contribution because I am a lower income student and there was no way that my family was able to give me money in a way that would have helped me go to college. From there, you're asked a question if you consider yourself a disadvantaged student. This one can be a little bit tricky to answer mostly because I don't know, like, do I really wanna tell medical schools that I'm disadvantaged? That's something that I really wrestled with for a moment but then it dawned on me uh yeah <laughs> of course i'm going to tell these schools that i consider myself a disadvantaged student i am lower income i am gay i am hispanic you don't really see people who identify with those things go to medical school so it was important to let them know that hey not only have i wrestled with my identity but i've also have had to overcome battles with income and going to school uh, because of those things so anyways i answered yes and wrote a paragraph about that here it's blacked out because it is personal and that does make me feel a little bit weird uh, to share but if you think you consider yourself a disadvantaged student please reach out to me I'll help you if you're writing out that paragraph or leading you in the direction of how you can really explain to schools that you're a disadvantaged student and relate that to your application all right moving on from there it'll ask you questions about your siblings uh, and also some questions about if you uh, were in the military, if you were in prison, other questions like that. That wasn't really applicable, applicable to me, so I might not be able to answer those questions, but just keep that in mind if any of those things apply to you. All right, academic record. <laughs> I've talked about this in previous videos where I know GPA can be something that pre-meds really stress about and I don't want you to look at my application and be like, oh my God, like these are the grades that I have to have in order to go to medical school. Well, yes, it is important to have good grades and to have a pretty good or if not great GPA, it's more important to produce an application that is true to who you are, genuine to who you are, and write that in a way that medical schools can understand that and see your potential and your impact as a medical student in their school. But for the sake of transparency, these are my grades and the classes that I took. As you can see here, I was mostly an A student, did have some Bs here and there. I was a biology student, so I mostly took biology classes that you can see here, principles of biology, chemistry, uh, organic chemistry. I was also an honors student, so you'll see some random classes throughout here, such as honors rhetoric, honors public speaking, world thought, uh, honors general psychology. So if you're an honors student and that applies to you, just keep in mind that you will have to label that as a specific course type, that being honors. If there was also a class in which you didn't get a letter grade, it was either pass or fail, you'll also have to mark that here, uh, so keep that in mind as well. All right, next page. Here are more classes that I took in my undergrad. Uh, physics, chemistry, world thought, biochemistry, medical fiction, and the physician, which is a really cool honors course. I'm gonna geek out for a second, but we read about 11, I think about 11 books and novels related to medicine. They were written from physicians or, or written by physicians in the lens of their patients. And really it just gave you that perspective of 
what medicine can look like through the eyes of an author. I also took intermediate medical Spanish and foundation foundations of psychology and sociology. All right, next page. Here are more classes that I took. As you can see here, it became more about the upper division biology classes that I was taking, anatomy, physiology, neurobiology, sociology, ecology, evolution, developmental biology, so on and so forth. The classes that I guess that I would really recommend for people about to take the MCAT are those science classes that are really going to push the way you read scientific literature and consider scientific topics. On the MCAT, you'll have paragraphs where you're reading about a scientific article or about some scientific topic, and you'll really will need to wrestle with that and answer questions in a speedy way. So if you're taking classes and your undergrad that are already asking you to do that, you'll be better prepared for the MCAT when that time comes for you. Next page, uh, here it'll ask you questions about your secondary school secondary school. It'll ask you questions about where you went to high school. For me, that was back in Murfreesboro. It'll also ask you questions about your university. And then I'm not sure what this is, but wasn't applicable to me, I guess. Whoops, editor Santiago here. I just realized that my GPA doesn't even show on this application because this is what I submitted and it has to get processed before you get a final GPA on there. But because I'm trying to be transparent here, my science GPA ended up being a 3.78 and my cumulative GPA was a 3.84. So anyways, if you're interested about GPA and stuff, that's what mine was. From there, if you've already taken the MCAT, you'll have, um, some information about that here, but because I was one of those people who applied during COVID, I had my MCAT canceled. So unfortunately I did send out my applications without my MCAT score, which I think kind of affected me for some schools and then had to take the MCAT at a later date. For full transparency of this video, my MCAT score is listed here. I made a 511, which is I think a little bit above average. In my head, I like to imagine that I would have had a higher score in chemistry if it hadn't been for the fact that I just didn't study organic chemistry. <laughs> when I took that class as an undergrad, I found it kind of easy. So I just thought like, why should I have to study for a class? I probably already know the answers to, but as luck would have it, when it came to the MCAT, I had questions about like diast, diast, Diaster, what the hell? Diastereomers, enantiomers. You see, I don't even know how to pronounce them anymore. So anyways, I had about four or five questions related to those. And as you can see, it, it really brought my score down. That being said, with the 511, I'm pretty happy with it. My, M my GPA, I already knew was pretty good. This MCAT score just added to that. And with my list of extra extracurriculars, I felt like I was at a good place. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it. Which talking about those extracurriculars, let's get to those now. For those of you unfamiliar with the MCAS, it'll give you the opportunity to write 15 extracurriculars that were important to you, but really how they pushed you into medicine or strengthened your understanding of wanting to be a physician. So gardening, how does that add up, right? Well, it's important to have good mental health as a medical student. So I wanted med schools to know that I was already preparing myself for what is to come by here, gardening and really taking care of my mental health. After that, I listed my leadership. That was um, my role as student body vice president. I was basically responsible for managing a $1.1 million budget, which I know is crazy, and about 13 members, so that changed depending on the week. You can read more about that here if you want to, but I also chose to write it as a most meaningful experience. In the AMCAS system, of those 15 that we just talked about, you'll be able to des designate three of those as your most meaningful experiences. You go from writing 700 characters to an additional 1300 on top of that 700 for your most meaningful. So just keep in mind because this, these are the ones that med schools are really gonna look at uh, as you write them. I chose to write this one as one of my most meaningful obviously because it is a leadership and a pretty big one, but honestly it did prepare me as a leader. It helped me learn to communicate with people, how to work with team members, how to delegate, how to take criticism and all those things are important as a medical student and also as a physician. So also keep in mind while you apply, they'll also ask you not only the experience type and the name, but also some information about some contact that they could reach out just to verify that you did do this position, their phone number. From there, it'll also ask you um, when you were a part of that experience, how many hours you put into that, the organization name, and then where you did that. Sweet, let's move on. So another meaningful experience that I wrote was about my honors research thesis. 
I did senior thesis during my last year of college while I was also student body vice president, which is a story on its own. That was crazy. But yeah, I wrote about this here because I did conduct my own research regarding these two medications, PrEP and PEP, which help preventing transmission and acquisition of HIV. Anyways, I learned to become a researcher. I conducted my own survey. I mean, wrote my own survey, conducted my own study, I worked with different patients, worked with different people wrote that up as a thesis, had presentations. I was also a staffed intern for the Elizabeth Warren campaign. For those of you unfamiliar, she was a candidate for president. And yeah, I wrote about that because I love politics and I wanted them to know that I have this mind that thinks of policy and how that affects medicine. Interesting enough, that's actually come up in three interviews. So they're reading your application. All right. So I was also a teacher, um, a peer instructor during my last, or not my last year of college, I took five years, so during my fourth year of college, your what would be your normal senior year. I basically taught a first year seminar class to freshmen and had that teacher role. I wrote lesson plans, I taught uh, hour long sessions and I graded work. I did this to show that I have been teaching, that I have had that experience because t teaching is also a really important role as a medical student and as a physician. I also had the opportunity to do some research, some bench research at the university through the scholarship that I got. Basically, I worked in a microbiology lab where I was able to analyze some microbiological samples from these mountains, the Pen Penamite mountain range. Oh God, I hope my mentor doesn't watch this. <laughs> from the Death Valley area. And then lastly on this page, I have my physician shadowing at the Southern Nevada Adult Mental Health Services, where I basically had an internship there with the psychology department, but I was able to basically shadow psychiatrists and psychology workers. That was really cool. It really opened my eyes to what mental health means and what that looks like for patient care. And yeah, I wrote about that here. If it feels like I'm rushing through these, it's because I don't want this video to be like 30 minutes long. So at any point, if you want to read more about what I did there, please pause the video, read the description. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. I'm definitely going to be answering them or reach out to me like a number of you ha already have. All right, next. Uh, I wrote about presentations that I've had specifically here. I think I wrote about the one that I had with the Honors College, mostly because I wanted to highlight that I had been president of the Honors Student Council, basically the main organization of our Honors College at the university. But again, to show that I had worked on my communication skills and my presentation skills, because these are important things that physicians need to have. So I'm hoping that you guys are kind of getting an understanding from my application. Basically, I was showing schools that, hey, I've done the preparatory work to be here to do what medical students do, to do what physicians are already doing. And look, I'm already doing those things as well. And again, that's not in a flex type of way, but more so in, hey, I'm a hard worker and I know what you want from me. So I'm doing those things already. All right. So then the next thing I had was research with an emergency room here in Nevada. I was an emergency medicine research assistant, which meant that I helped with research and clinical studies in the emergency department. This was really cool because not only was it a research highlight, but it was also a clinical highlight. I had shadowed physicians, physicians here, I had done research, clinical research with them, and I had worked with patients and had seen that patient care in the emergency room. All right, so from there, I also wrote about my mentorship that I had with the Honors College. I was what was, what was called a Bennett Honors Mentor. Basically, I had 10 to 11 students that I watched for and kind of had an eye on uh, over the course of a year. I was able to do this for two years and it came with a scholarship as well, so I love that opportunity. All right, let's move on. So here I wrote about my experience being a Spanish interpreter at the Volunteers of Medicine of Southern Nevada. It was also another meaningful experience in my application because I worked with mostly Spanish speaking patients. Specifically at this clinic, the total population of the patients were about 71% Hispanic and a lot of times they didn't speak English. So my role there was very important for the clinic and also for my own professional development. Yeah, I really enjoyed working with disenfranchised patients and being someone who could form those um, linguistic bridges between providers and patients. And it really just showed me the type of physician that I wanna be. I do wanna work with disenfranchised communities and underserved um, populations. I know that I want to be someone that Latinos can look up to, a provider that they can visit and not feel like they're being judged or feel like they have to shy away from the truth. Those are reasons that I chose to highlight this as the most meaningful experience. And it's also part of my um, 
personal story. So yeah, I, I, I love it. And then last on this page, I also wrote about my, the community service that I did at the Ronald McDonald House Charities, where I think as a freshman it was, this was the first time that I saw medicine, saw it at a hospital level, and really was able to immerse myself in that setting and see what medicine looked like. All right, next page. Here I talk about another mentorship that I had with UNLV Buddies. Basically, I was a mentor for these two elementary students at this elementary school in Nevada. I worked with them basically every other Friday almost, if not every Friday, to teach them about reading and mathematics, but really just be there for them during this after school program. And then I was also a member of the Latino Pre-Medical Student Association. For any of you undergrads out there, please get involved with the pre-medical organization at your university. That experience will be so important as you apply because it connects you with other pre-meds that are going through this and maybe we'll also give you opportunities to get involved with the community around you. Next page. All right, so then the last thing on my application was my honors, awards, and recognitions. I chose to highlight these because I wanted medical schools to see that I had done pretty well as a university student. While the other things I've talked about weren't flexes, I kind of wanted this one to be a flex. I wanted medical schools to see that I am someone that they should not only admit as a medical student, but someone they should also invest in because I have strong commitments to my community and I can do those things while also being a good student while also doing academically well. So anyways, that's a flex. I don't like flexing, but that's a part of my application. And then lastly, it is my personal statement. I was a little bit hesitant in sharing this because I think so much more goes into your personal statement than just making it sound good and look good. But I also am doing this YouTube channel for Latinos out there, for people of color, for first gen students. I wanna help you guys. So if reading my personal statement will get you inspired and get you there, go ahead and do it. But the caveat to that is my story is my story. Your story is your own story. If you try to mimic the structure of mine, it's probably not gonna work because your story has its own rhythm and its own wave and it has to be told within that frequency for it to make sense to you. So stay tuned, I am gonna make a video about how you should write your personal story and how you can make it make sense to you. But if you wanna go ahead and read mine, mine is here, pause the video and go ahead and look at it. The last thing on my application is the letters of evaluation, um, letters of recommendation is what I call it, I don't know why I said it like that. I got one from the president of the university. I got two from my science professors, one from a doctor, one from my thesis advisor, and then someone who saw my growth and development and who was also one of my teachers in the honors college. And then lastly, these are the schools that I applied to. So 20 in total. All right, so as we close out, let me just go over a quick summary of what we just saw. We saw that there are some information about your parents, about where you grew up, about your biographical information. So get those things in mind and ready if you can right now. Then when the application opens up, spend the first day or two getting that information done. It's quick, it's easy, shouldn't take you that much time. Then from there, something that's gonna take you quite some time is your coursework. They ask you questions about what the title of the course was, what its abbreviation was, when you took it, how many credits it was, what your grade was. That's a lot of information from freshman year to your last year in college. Even though that shouldn't take you that much time, I promise you it's gonna take you quite a while just because it's a lot of information to input. It took me about maybe three or four days just because Again, it's very tedious and you get over it pretty quickly. Then from there, you'll have to list out your experiences. There's a total of 15 that you can do with three of them being your most important experiences. And then lastly, you'll have your personal story and your letter of recommendations. I'll make a video about how you should write your personal story Honestly, I'll just do it in my next video just because it corresponds with this one. And then the very last thing of the application is the schools that you will send your application out to. And I'll make a video about that in the near future too. But yeah, that was my application. For those of you who had questions, I really hope that I answered them and showed you what my application looked like in this video. But if you have additional questions, please leave them down below or contact me and I'll be happy to answer them. Please take care, happy new year, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.